This fish dish is fancy enough for date night and easy enough to make for a crowd. I'm going to show you exactly how to grill it. I'm going with the charcoal grill today and setting it to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit by lighting up three quarters of a chimney of charcoal and leaving the vents fully open. I'm not using wood because it'll overpower the fish and I want to make sure that those big, bold flavors come through on their own. The base is made up of a 20 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and this one came flavored with basil and oregano. So there's going to be at least one person in the comments who says you should never put acidic food in your cast iron pan. And they're right, but you can still break the rules if you know what you're doing. And for me, a regular old pan that might be oven safe is not going to be grill safe, and that's why I'm using cast iron. You can always re-season it later. Angry comments aside, I added a quarter of a sliced red onion, and I could have added some half tomatoes for extra texture in the sauce. I chopped up some garlic scapes fresh from my garden, and you can totally skip that if you don't have them. I also added three cloves of sliced garlic before putting it on the grill to get it nice and bubbly. I'm going to let that sauce cook for about 15 minutes or so by itself, just so all the flavors can get to know each other. You also don't want to have raw garlic or raw onion in the final product. It's important that those things are cooked, and so I'm giving that just a little bit of extra time. After 15 or 20 minutes, the sauce should be bubbly, and I added all of the other ingredients. I'm a big fan of artichoke hearts and Kalamata olives, and used about 6 ounces of both before adding 3 ounces of feta cheese and topping with some fresh sliced lemon. If you like a little bit of heat, pepperoncinis are a really nice touch. One of the variations of this recipe has the fish cooking with the sauce and all the other toppings, which can come out pretty well, but it's easy to overcook the fish while you do it. If you cook it separately like I'm doing, you can make sure that it's cooked to perfection and you get all those roasty, smoky flavors on the fish and it comes out extra awesome. Patting your fish dry with a paper towel helps it get a bit of color and coating with oil will help prevent sticking. If you add a little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic to taste, it'll be ready to go on the grill. Keeping it on the small cooling rack saves the fish if it sticks and you don't have to worry about the greasy grill grates flavoring it. I also like to grill the lemon slices which reduces the acid and makes for a really good presentation. A minute or two per side should be perfect. If your grill isn't hot enough you can put the fish directly over the coals for a decent sear but watch it closely because it cooks quickly. This smells absolutely amazing and I wish that you could smell it too. If you hit that like button it'll help the channel out quite a bit and we can make more videos just like this one. The fish is done when it starts to flake and hits 145 degrees Fahrenheit or in about 10 or 15 minutes. Putting the fish directly on the sauce makes for a really great presentation and will keep it warm until it's ready to serve. Now don't let anybody tell you that the fish will stink up your grill. If you rotate the grates over the fire and let it burn out, you'll burn off the fish oil and no one will be the wiser. There are a lot of bold flavors in this recipe that go really well together. And if you want to learn how to grill whole trout, check out this video and we'll catch you next time.